from WFRV TV, Local 5, serving Northeast Wisconsin, including Green Bay, Fox Cities, and the Lakeshore. This is Newsmaker Sunday. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. One of the longest serving mayors in Northeast Wisconsin is hanging it up. After 16 years, Menasha Mayor Don Merkis has decided not to run for re-election in 2024. And joining us this morning, the aforementioned mayor, Don Merkis. Thanks so much, Mr. Mayor, for joining us today. Good morning, thanks for having me. Good to see you here. Um, every you time too. a person of note as yourself steps down, especially after such a long time in, in mm -hmm. service, the first question public has out there is, why? Well, I just think it's, we've accomplished a lot of great things and now it's time to let the next generation accomplish some new things as well. You say it was a, a time, which, which is correct. Is it not running again or retiring? Oh, it's not retiring. I'm okay. not old enough to retire yet, so I'll be doing some different things, but hopefully things that are more anonymous and just out in the community doing some, some things as well. Okay, you just mentioned I'll be doing different things. That's always the second question people have. Oh. What's he going to do? <laughs> What's in the plan? There's not a specific plan yet. I, the only plan I have right now is I plan to work at a greenhouse next spring. I did that last year as well, and then after that, it'll kind of be up in the air. It'll, it'll be some different part-time type positions and volunteer opportunities and things like that. You, you probably could have been mayor for life if you so chose to do so. I don't know about that. But How long have you been contemplating this move? So um, probably about two years now I've really? been thinking about it. There's, like I said, there's been great things that are happening, but at some point you kind of lose that passion and those new ideas mm -hmm. and you um, start to think that maybe it's time for one of our other up and coming people mm -hmm. to take those positions. Uh, your decision alone, did you bring in family? How did the process go? That was my decision alone. Yours alone? Yeah. Uh, it is quite a strain on family life and yeah. doing things because you're always kind of in the spotlight. And you probably know that too. Everyone knows who you are and talks. Everyone has a question for me when I'm out in the community. When you made the decision, you finally said to yourself, okay, Don Marcus, this is it. Who was the first person you told inside City Hall? Ooh. It was probably one of our directors, probably our community development director or our city attorney. Uh, we've been talking about this for a couple years, like I said, and they've been trying to talk me out of it for that time. Yep. And at one date, I just handed them the press release and said, this is what's going to happen. What was the reaction? Um, they were disappointed, but they mm -hmm. understand as well. And we have all new department heads, too, since I was mayor. Everyone who was there when I started has left, retired for the most part, okay. and we have this new group now. Um, they're much more technologically savvy than I am. They use social media. They know how to use those different things to their advantage and that data to their advantage. And I kind of feel left out sometimes with some of that stuff. You served as an alderman before you were elected in, I did. in 2008. So you've had a long history of public service. What is it about public service that made you devote so much of your life to it? I think it's seeing those things happen and be able to be part of those things happening. Menasha in 2008 wasn't a place that people wanted to live. It was a bar town. It was kind of run down. It, was, it wasn't a place that was on your list to go out and buy a house, start a business. Our goal that whole entire time was to really focus on the waterfront, change that slogan to your place on the water, encourage people to get out and exercise and enjoy those things and look at Menasha as a good place to raise a family or start a business. Interesting that you would say that right out front. Menasha was not the place that people wanted to be. I take it you saw something there that you felt you could turn around. Oh, exactly. And I, when I first moved to Menasha, I was on the island, which is kind of that trendy place in Nina and Menasha. Yeah. And beyond that, it wasn't as trendy and cool, but Right near the downtown, all those opportunities, you can get on the bike trails. The trestle was just opening at that point. There was a lot to be had, but it was all in its infancy. Mm -hmm. So when you look back, what are you going to look at as far as highlights go? You're going to say, I did that. I think the trail system okay. is a big thing. Um, the downtown development was a big thing. But also the 
completion of the east side. We had a failed development on the east side that we were have, struggling with, um, loan payments on that that we didn't know exactly how to finance, and we were able to turn that around along with a partner up here in the building industry, and we ended up with a beautiful east side of our community mm -hmm. now. Do you have any unfinished business? You can look back and say, I wish we would have accomplished that. There are a lot of unfinished yeah. things. There are a lot of things that are in process right now. We are we just received a $2 million grant through the state to refurbish our uh, navigation canal. That'll be happening this summer. We're working on a $5 million project in Jefferson Park this summer. The main entry into downtown Racine Street will be done next year. So there's a lot of projects still on the table that, even though I won't be able to finish them, I'll know I was part of them. And you'll be there close enough to see oh, yeah. how they're going. <laughs> I live right downtown. I look out over the city square. It's a great place to live, and it has great opportunities to just get out and enjoy the river and the bike trails and all those things. Manasha Mayor Don Merkus, our guest this morning. We have much more to come with him, so please stay right there. We are back now with Manasha Mayor Don Merkus. Uh, downtown Manasha, big changes, as you have mentioned earlier in the broadcast. What jumps out at you when you drive down Main Street, Faith Technologies, the huge building. Uh, how did that come about? What effect has that had on your downtown? Well, it came about as kind of a partnership between local developers who have done this in Ena and Menasha and other places in the area. And they worked with us to bring a corporate headquarters downtown. We're also, I'd also been working on a similar project on the island. That one didn't come through, but this one did. But what it really did was show Menasha was a good place to build, to work. It changed the types of people that were downtown and it encouraged new restaurants to come down and new residential to come down as well. What was it about Menasha that attracted Faith Technologies? Um, they were looking for a new site. They're growing exponentially. Right. They wanted a headquarters site and they wanted it to be in the Fox Cities. You've got the uh, marina downtown. That's quite the luxury. Not it is. a whole lot of communities can say that. It is a big, beautiful spot in the middle of our downtown. It encourages people to come back and forth. Oh, we've got a picture it. of yep. it. Uh, it's actually more beautiful in the summer. <laughs> um, sure. But I think the, the issue right now is the, the, the lock, the Menasha right. lock, and the Gobi issues that we have there, and it's kind of a dead end. So we're hoping to see the final study come out this winter and hopefully we'll be able to get the Navigation Authority to get that lock back open. So as we're looking at the video here of uh, the marina, is that marina at, at full capacity right now? Is there room for expansion? Is there a future there? Or, or is that what it is and going to be that way? That's what size it will be. That's we're seeing a, a real different change in who's buying boats, who is boating. The boats are becoming more uh, modest size, a lot more pontoons, a lot more pleasure boating, a lot less sailboating. So there, there probably is an opportunity to grow there, but there may be some opportunities down at Jefferson Park to have a more residential size marina mm -hmm. down there in the future. Also down there, the uh, Racine Street Bridge and, and, and the roundabouts. Why was that bridge needed? Well, that bridge was really dangerous if you it were was. a walker or a biker because that bridge had three 10-foot lanes and that was it. So if you were on your bike, you took your life into your own hands. And we want to be the center of biking in the Fox Cities mm -hmm. with the Trestle, Loop the Lake, and now High Cliff Connection. And you couldn't cross that bridge on a bike. So who owns that bridge now? Is it city, state, it, feds? It is still in limbo a little bit. Oh, they is. have not quite completed everything, but it will come to the city at some point. Um, other side of downtown, you got the Bryn Project. What's happening mm -hmm. there? So the Bryn Project has probably been a little disappointing because it took so long. This was one of the first downtown projects that was shown between Appleton, Nina, and Menasha, and it's the last one to be completed. We probably had every problem you could think of with that project. We had contaminated soils, we had structural issues with the design, um, two different developers, but I'm happy to say now it is on its way and it should be completed early this spring, maybe March or April. So that's soon now. You're finally yes. seeing a little light at the end of the tunnel here. Mm -hmm. They have uh, the interior starting to be built out. Bricks going up today, and the uh, warm winter has really helped them mm -hmm. quite a bit as well. So you've, you've got some housing there. 
Uh, housing is an issue that affects every single community in the United States. Yes. What is Menasha doing to address affordable housing? So I think we have some great opportunities for historic affordable housing. We have a lot of what you'd call starter homes in Menasha. Mm -hmm. We were a working class community, people that worked in the factories. These houses really could use a little bit of sprucing up and they're gonna be great houses. We started a program called Strong Neighborhoods and we'll match the homeowner's investment into their home to help them upgrade those kitchens, the windows, the, all those different items. Um, we've invested this year, I think it was about $80,000, and we had almost $300,000 worth of projects from that 80,000 city investment. We have much more to come with Mayor Don Merkis of Menasha, outgoing mayor. Much more to come with him. Stay with us. And we are back this morning with Menasha Mayor Don Merkis. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Jefferson Park along uh, Lake Winnebago undergoing some changes. What's happening there? Sure. So Jefferson Park is our probably biggest, most used park, and it's needed a little bit of life for a while here now. Right now, if you go out there, you'll see the playground is under construction. A um, $750,000 playground will be going up this spring. Has a life, a um, lighthouse sort of a theme. It'll be, I think, 15 or 20 feet tall overlooking the park. It is going to be spectacular. The, also, the new, we'll have a new pavilion, as well as new baseball diamond, upgraded trail system. It'll be pretty much a new park except for the swimming pool, and that's hopefully planned for three to five years in the future. Okay, another big draw, uh, the Heckrod Wetland Reserve, another place a lot of people visit mm -hmm. throughout the year. How important is that to Menasha? We bring students from all over the Fox Valley and beyond into Heckrod. And I was fortunate to live next to the executive director when I lived on the island. Luke's a great guy. He is bringing wonderful things to that facility. Uh, just that opportunity, though, to be in the middle of the city and in the middle of nature at the same time. Yeah. Uh, thousands of people every day, right on the trail. It's a great opportunity. Um, the trail system, how important is that to Menasha and the connection you have with the surrounding communities? So like I said, um, the Trestle Trail was just going in when I first became mayor, and that became kind of the background to the whole system, backbone to the whole system. Right now we're working on the, the um, High Cliff Connection, which will connect basically the Trestle Trail to High Cliff State Park. And when people first told me that we were thinking about doing that, I told them they were crazy. No one's gonna ride their bike to High Cliff, but it's only 10 miles or so. So it's, right. it's a decent bike ride, and I think it will be spectacular once it's done. As you well know, we have been talking about the locks for how many years now? Mm -hmm. You briefly touched on it. What are the issues there? Why are the locks not open? And what do you see for the future of those locks? Well, no one wants to see gobies get into Lake Winnebago. Right. I think that's the big thing. But we also have to be reasonable about the types of prevention activities that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at electronic barrier, but it looks like it's going to be in the $5 million range to make this happen. And this is owned by the Fox River Navigational Authority. They are part of the state, and they're looking to fund that. DNR has not yet approved the final project, but we're hopeful this winter. And then hopefully that will also work on the rapid crash lock, which in the Wrightstown area, so you could go from Green Bay all the way mm -hmm. down to Lake Winnebago. I get the impression, based upon the way you're describing some of these projects, um, Jefferson Park, Heckrod, downtown, the trail. It seems to me that when you first came into office, you looked at Menasha, you looked at all these things, and you essentially said, we can be better than this. I would agree. There it, it seems as though you, you spent your administration turning things around. And tweaking things to make them little jewels. Like you said, Heckrod's a little jewel. Jefferson Park will become a jewel, but the downtown, those opportunities, um, and it, as you just do slate changes and connect things, all of a sudden it becomes this great system. I had looked at our park system as like the Emerald Necklace in Boston, which mm -hmm. was an Olmstead park system. And we have all these great little parks. How do we connect them all together and make them the centerpiece of their neighborhoods? And so you have. We have. They are 
fantastic. We actually have a group of people that plant the formal gardens every spring as volunteers. It's the highlight of their spring. Um, I don't remember, how, it's about five or $6,000 worth of plants that we do it in the morning. And everyone's so proud of that and that involvement that they have in that park. Improvement all the way around. We are back yeah. to wrap up with Mayor Don Merkis right after this. So please stay right there. Back now with outgoing Menasha Mayor Don Merkis. Uh, you've got a big birthday party coming up. Uh, the city of Menasha in 2024. You're going to be 150 years old. Oh, what do you have planned? What kind of a party? We have a, a few surprises that we're working on right now, but we hope to have a visit from Mayor O.J. Hall, who was our mayor in 1875. Really? Yes. How are we going to pull this off? We will be um, <laughs> having a time machine in our oh. common council chambers. <laughs> so if you're not aware, one of our teachers at Maplewood High does these history programs mm -hmm. with a time machine, and he is going to loan us his time machine and help us put this on as part of our birthday party. We'll be honoring all of our mayors that day and a little bit more of our history as well. So I think this is a, a, a citywide party that you're going to throw? It will be, yes. So we plan on having a, a large event in July, June, and we're doing some fun things. We're doing a speed puzzle competition in February, some trivia things. We want to give back to the community, so we're doing blood drives and food drives mm -hmm. and things like that as well. But I can't kind of share what the Ju June agenda is quite yet because it needs to be a little bit of a surprise. All right, well, that's, that's good to leave it as a surprise. It is. It is. Um, you still have a few months as mayor of mm -hmm. Menasha. I don't think you're the kind of guy who's going to say, I'm just going to ride it out and ride off into the sunset. What do you have planned between now and the day you leave office? Well, the biggest thing is cleaning up those projects that we had talked about okay. a little bit earlier. We're bidding out projects right now. We just... Um, did a solar project that we're bidding out and we'll be installing probably before my term ends. Uh, there, there's a lot of road projects and park projects and Arbor Day projects that need to happen before I leave. What about the Menasha Police Station? Uh, are you building a new facility separate from the fire station? What's the plan there? There's a lot of opportunity for police and fire and possible um, joint efforts with Fox Crossing and fire. Uh, we need to look at the police station just to see how a police station operates in 2023 compared to how it operated in, I think, 1980-something when that building was built. Mm -hmm. We have a great police department, a very progressive department, but that building doesn't necessarily suit them well. So that's a future project for someone else. And, and have you been in contact with police officials as to what they need, what they want? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So we just have, we have a new chief this year as well. Uh, Chief Thorne is really working on his vision for that department and how the department might change over the next couple years based on his leadership compared to uh, Chief Stika's leadership mm -hmm. before that. The uh, east side of your town seems to be the, the growth area. Sure. W would that be a true statement? Uh, we're pretty much built out. We have fixed boundaries, and that's probably one of the things that I'm a little disappointed with when I, when I look back on that, that we didn't fight a little bit harder for a little bit more regular boundaries. Um, but uh, east side, there is some growth opportunity, but I think our real growth opportunity is the riverfront in the downtown area on the island that we can start building up and creating a little bit more urban environment that really would attract some of the younger generation that's coming forward that wants that walkable, more urban mm -hmm. opportunity. You uh, said you couldn't uh, divulge a few things about the upcoming big 150th mm -hmm. birthday party. Maybe something else you can't divulge. Have we seen the last of Mayor Don Merkis politically? Most likely, yes. There might be something in the future, but I don't have plans to go on to state government. I might be involved locally or regionally a little bit, more on the volunteer level, but not likely on an elected official mm -hmm. level. Have you thought about post-mayoral life. Have you thought about that day in April when you wake up and go, I don't have to run the city today? It will be a big relief in some <laughs> ways. There's always something going on in the city. When you think about it, we're running a security agency, a, a bookstore, a HR staffing agency, a construction company. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm involved. I have my fingers in all those things every day. And there's always something in one of those areas that we're working on. 
so yeah, I'm going to take a deep breath, um, probably sit in the backyard a little bit and relax that first couple weeks. Um, have you backed anyone for the position? Do you have a preferred candidate or are you staying out of it? I'm not going to necessarily stay out of it, but I want to see who all comes in. Right now we have four potential candidates, and I want to see what they're all about before I make a final decision on who I might support. As you look back now, viewers from Menasha watching our program this morning, uh, your, your final thoughts to them in your time of service, 16 yeah. years. Well, I mean, it's been a huge honor to be trusted to lead the community and to make those changes. Change is hard for all of us. So to be supportive of changes and things being different is a very big honor. Um, I love talking to people just out in the community and seeing what their hopes and dreams are. Um, and it, like I said, it's been an honor to do something like this. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on this morning. Okay. It's mm -hmm. great seeing you again too, Tom. Much appreciated. Best of luck for your future, although I know that it's, it's going to be a, a bright <laughs> one. Thanks. Thank you. If you have a newsmaker in your town who you think we ought to have on the show, let us know about it. Send us an email to tips at wearegreenbay.com or you can message us on Facebook. And be sure to join us once again Sunday morning at 7. Until then, have a great day.